The major news story today was the attempted bombing of not only just the CNN headquarters, but several major figures within the Democratic Party. Police were alerted at about 9.30 this morning to a bomb that was sent to the CNN headquarters. Now, it should be noted, this was not the actual CNN headquarters. This was not the street address, but the official address to the organization, meaning it went directly to their mailroom where someone found the package, found it was suspicious, and ended up feeling that it was enough to go ahead to call the police and the police sending in the bomb squad. Now we should note that this is something very significant. I mean, realize the magnitude of what has happened here. A bomb was sent to a major media outlet that was critical of U.S. President Donald Trump. Now, a lot of them went to other went to figures of the Democratic Party, including uh, Obama, uh, the Clinton family, Schultz, Harris, and Warren. And that's all that we know as of this time. Now, a great, uh, a huge portion of New York City was blocked off during the time in which the police were investigating, which eventually lead, led to them taking hold of the suspected explosive, placing it inside of a special vehicle, which looked very similar to a cement mixer with the, with the end cut off. It looked very much like a cement mixer, and then was taken to a special bomb disposal facility in the Bronx. Now, this story, obviously, as big as this is, uh, was covered nationwide and even covered by uh, many news stations around the world, uh, particularly CNN. Now, uh, one of the stations that I was actually watching while this coverage was taking place was CNN, and noting that their offices had actually been evacuated during the whole ordeal. And much of the live reporting, the woman on the ground, uh, her name was Poppy, uh, she had done it largely through Skype, which showed that CNN was wholly unprepared for this. Uh, I mean, you know, who? no one really is prepared for something like this. And uh, much they had to use lower end technology like Skype, etc., to carry out the news reporting. Now, what's very interesting about this is not only the fact that it was a mainstream news outlet that was threatened with an explosion, I guess not even actually threatened because they actually did carry out sending a bomb to them, although the bomb did not go off. It was specifically addressed to the former CIA director, John Brennan. Now, John Brennan doesn't work for CNN. John Brennan works for, uh, has a contract with MSNBC and another uh, uh, cable news outlet. Now, he has appeared to give opinion on CNN a couple times, but he does not work for CNN. Now, that's something sa that, that says something very specific about this situation, that the bomber himself was not terribly informed of exactly where John Brennan was and even who it is that he even worked for. Uh, it seems very likely in this situation that all he did was just see that he had been on CNN and CNN was demonized by Trump et al. about uh, being fake news and an enemy of the people and a lot of other of uh, Trump's rhetoric about how uh, you know journalists should be hanged and other very violent rhetoric like that. That's all the news that we have for now. As of this recording, Trump has not made a public statement uh, about the situation. He has not come out to at least condemn the people who carried out this bomb, even though it seems very likely that it was all his own supporters that did this. But some of the people who did manage to come forward was Ivanka Trump. And in her statement, she said, I strongly condemn the attempted acts of aggression against President Obama, the Clinton family, CNN, and others. There is no excuse. America is better than this. Gratitude to the Secret Service and law enforcement for all they do to keep this nation safe. Now, of course, it should be mentioned that uh, the Secret Service doesn't keep the country safe. It keeps certain figures within the United States safe. But at least Ivanka Trump, a person who of, uh, frankly, no credibility uh, and uh, of no relevance whatsoever to the political landscape, someone who is a mere staffer and someone who is only there because of who her, who, who her father is.
However, Vice President Mike Pence did manage to take to uh, Twitter to make a statement in lieu of uh, Trump having done so. He said, we condemn the attempted attacks on former President Obama, the Clintons, and CNN, and others. These cowardly actions are despicable and have no place in this country. Grateful for swift response of Secret Service, FBI, and law enforcement, those responsible will be brought to justice. Now, it's very interesting how the Trump administration, or at least uh, important and somewhat important figures inside the administration, would take the time to denounce these actions, which they normally should, but without recognizing their primary role and responsibility in this situation. Ever since Trump ran for office, anybody who disagreed with him was labeled as fake news and labeled as an enemy of the people. And he did this month after month after month. And he also did this right through his entire uh, presidential reign. His regime has completely demonized any form of media that was even slightly critical of him in any way, shape, or form. Declared them to be enemies of the, the people. He stopped short of saying enemies of the state, he, but the enemies of the people, the enemies of freedom, the enemies of truth. And this is the kind of rhetoric that he threw around constantly. That journalists were the problem. They were lying to them. That fake news was all about giving them the wrong opinion. And the wrong opinion was the one that disagreed with him. And we're all familiar with the signs that we saw. People with uh, t-shirts that said, uh, journalist rope tree, assemble as you will. Essentially threatening violence and death upon journalists for simply doing their job. Now, this of course is not to say that the media is without bias. Of course, CNN is liberal and it leans towards the Democratic Party. That much is blatantly obvious. But that is not what the Trumpsters are doing. What they are doing is mindlessly attacking anyone who disagrees with them in any way, shape, or form. It's not about them being liberal-leaning. It's about them not agreeing with them. Because there are rightful, insistent criticisms that you could make of Donald Trump that go completely ignored by these people as though they never happened. One of the things that Trump lamented and many of his followers lamented the same thing was the tight relationship between Washington and Wall Street. Imagine that. Capitalists wielding power in capitalism. So they decried it and the bankers get whatever they want from Obama, etc., implying they didn't also get whatever it is they wanted from the Republicans before him, etc., and then what does he do? He turns around and gives a tax break to all of those same rich people that they decried Obama for being friends with. Which is strange because at least Obama was critical of them to some degree, even though he did just give them whatever, he, whatever they wanted. So this tremendous amount of hypocrisy from the Trumpsters went completely ignored. And you can rightfully criticize them for this, but they will ignore it. You could also rightly criticize his complete cold-blooded inhumanity for separating families at the border. I mean, if at least if you're going to deport people, at least deport them together. At least let people still have custody of their own children. At the very least. And these people cheer on and celebrate and saying that they deserve it. So for all of their big, glorious talk, they're uh, rambling on and on about the family and how we got to keep the family together and it's the gays that are tearing it apart and the abortionists and the Wiccans or whatever the hell it is that they're blaming this week. They seem to be absolutely without concern whatsoever that these families are being torn apart and being torn apart with, you know, like force. It's not even like the family's dysfunctional or something. They're being physically torn apart by the God-blessed United States government that didn't do nothing in their eyes. But that's not enough for them. But I mean, that's suppose, it's, it's very obvious that it was a Trumpster who sent these bombs. And that's the kind of thing that they would do. Now, of course, we do not know this for certain. We do not know 100% that this was a person who supported Donald Trump. But I mean... Come on. We really know that since all the people that were targeted were known enemies of Donald Trump and thus, therefore, the enemies of freedom and democracy and uh, whatever kind of lofty notion that frankly doesn't exist in the United States anyway. 
so, I mean, it's pretty clear this is going to come out to be someone who was, uh, uh, was a Trumpster. But don't let that stop you. Don't let critical analysis or uh, common sense obviousness stand in the way of who it is that you want to blame for this entire situation. Right-wing media has already come out attacking the left for supposedly being behind it. They are outright calling it pure BS and a false flag. That's right. Right-wing media in the U.S. has degraded, degenerated right down to the level of Alex Jones. Now, Alex Jones has not been the mainstream opinion. He's been a lunatic fringe and even a largely growing lunatic fringe. But think about where this is now. We are now seeing that kind of lunatic fringe mentality being used in the mainstream or as close to the mainstream as they can get. Those alternative media that are right wing are calling this a false flag operation. They're outright doing conspiracy theory nonsense in order to justify their position, in order to completely whitewash the violent rhetoric that has come out of this U.S. administration. This whole presidency, this regime of Donald Trump has done nothing but demonize, incentivize violence, call for violence to happen, and say all kinds of defamatory garbage to the point of insanity. No media should not be trusted. But is it really necessary to go around lynching politicians or sending bombs to media organizations? This violent rhetoric, this idea of us versus them, you know, it's coming right from Trump himself, his administration and his followers. And then when one of them acts out on that violence, much like they did at his rallies, beating people up, spitting in their faces, assaulting women, because you know how they're all about those family and Christian values, except, you know, when they're beating up women like the fucking pussies they are. When one of them goes and does something like this, something violent, like sending bombs to people, and it's, oh, we, we didn't do anything, it couldn't have been us, because we're such pure, holy, and, you know, uh, people that, 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 that can never do anything wrong because we're the good guys and we didn't, we didn't do anything. There's no way that we would do this. And that's the mentality they have. It couldn't have been them. Of course not. It's never the poor, oppressed, exploited right-winger who's constantly spewing hate and violent rhetoric at people. Nowhere could someone with a violent mentality and constantly calling for violence end up committing an act of violence in their minds. And that's exactly what we have seen here today. This bombing, without a doubt, was carried out by someone of the Trump stripe. And we know that this was a Trumpster. And common sense will tell you this. Now, the police, of course, have their own kind of information. Uh, they've said these bombs are very unsophisticated. They weren't, this, this, this wasn't a, a master bombs craftsman. This was somebody who decided to do something one day and then mailed out these bombs to people. So it's not like this is a state op by some other state. Like I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, somehow the Democrats maybe decided to blame Russia for this because that's the in, the in vogue thing to do now, to blame Russia for absolutely everything. But they're saying that due to the fact these were very clearly unsophisticated explosives, ones that didn't have much in the way of uh, sophistication, that this was an amateur and this guy's going to be caught because these guys don't know how to, uh, don't know how to cover their tracks, uh, fingerprints both fi figuratively and literally in this case. So this guy is going to be caught. I mean, even if he was a professional, someone who was an expert at building and mailing bombs to people, it's extremely unlikely they would ever get, the person who did this would ever get away with it. You don't send a bomb to a former president and get away with it. You don't send a bomb to a major media outlet and get away with it. It doesn't happen the FBI, the Secret Service, will hunt this person down, and they will be found. 
Their only saving grace is to try to leave the country. And even then, there are still ways of getting someone like that. So it's very likely this person will be caught fairly quickly, given the amateur nature of the bombing that was carried out. And that's what leads me to believe that this was a Trumpster. I know Trumpsters really, you know, they're really not very bright. They're not very intelligent people. So when you add that in, the, the, the unsophisticated manner of the explosive, the political targets, then we know very well that this is going to be a, that this is going to be a Trumpster. And this political violence lies directly on the head of U.S. President Donald Trump. He is the one who has pushed this since day one. Now, a lot of them like to say that this isn't America. This isn't what America does. This isn't what we do. Well, <laughs> um, you bomb people all the time, actually. They're just not your people. They're other people's people. Usually they're called the third world. But bombing, murdering, and killing is very much the American way. Your country hasn't been at war basically the entire period of its existence, and then say fighting, killing, violence isn't your way, it isn't who you are. Yeah, yes it is. This is the nature of the empire. And what are we seeing here right now? It's approaching inwards, almost like an implosion of the empire. Now, this is an isolated incident, and maybe you could call it an implosion if this happened many more times. But this could be the start of it happening many more times. Who knows? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. We will have to wait and see what happens. But the violence in mainstream political society is increasing, and we're seeing this right now. Aside from this nonsense of you will not divide us, that's kind of the point of politics is that you, you're divided. That's I've never really understood that. I mean, the division is very obviously there. This is, I think this is going to get worse. Are there going to be other bombings? I don't know. But I know there's going to be an escalation of violence. There's going to be like, ran, there are going to be like random outbursts. Like, uh, you know, some Trump or some Trump... Trump pansy just going off and attacking people. Not necessarily great coordinated violence or like what you could call pseudo-terrorism. Very small acts of violence that, if left unchecked, will explode into a, a larger issue. That is how bad President Trump actually is. Not in any you know recent history has there been violence like this. I mean, we'd have to go back to the civil rights movement of the 1960s in order to see something like, like this. And even then, I don't know if there were bombs mailed to, you know, mainstream media outlets in politicians' homes, although that may have happened. I wasn't there at the time. But the escalation from how low it was before is what's significant here. And this is what we have to watch out for. So this violence that occurred today, this violence that is all around us right now, escalating, Trump, this is your fault. I'd ask you to apologize to the American public for what you've done, but we know you're, you're not capable of doing that. In fact, the bigger question is, would you even acknowledge your role in the creation of this violent situation? Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.